Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I'm just sitting here drinking my morning coffee, and I don't have the robe on because it is too hot this morning for me to be hanging out in my robe drinking hot coffee. But I still look sexy as hell. So the video I did yesterday, and I'll, I'll link it below, on why Glycemic Index is essentially meaningless and why it was a flawed system always. It brought up some questions about you. What about insulin? Doesn't insulin cause you to store body fat or when your insulin levels are spiked do you stop burning fat blah 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 all right guys that's true now if you guys want just the cliff notes and not to watch the whole video i'll just give you the cliff notes and the shortcut you don't need to worry about insulin when you're trying to lose body fat or you are trying to avoid gaining excess body fat it doesn't actually play the role outside of the context of net calorie balance and in fact the best way to lower insulin total circulating insulin over a 24 hour period is to either reduce your total food intake or to train vigorously people who regularly exercise lift weights do intense cardio things like that they need less insulin they improve insulin sensitivity they reduce the amount of insulin they need to do things so that goes back to the question of well, what do you mean to do things well insulin is essentially a transporter its primary job is to transport glucose around for you to use it which is your body's primary fuel source is glucose now the question becomes people always point out well spike insulin causes you to store body fat yeah that's true but you've got to remember insulin depending on how sensitive you are happens as a dose dependent response to three basic things uh, carbohydrate intake protein intake or an alcohol intake those three things all produce an insulin response now fat doesn't since fat doesn't uh, produce an insulin response and we know that that insulin elevated insulin levels slows down fat burning and in some cases can completely stop fat burning as a fuel source yeah that's true but your body doesn't need insulin to stop fat burning when dietary fat is higher to even store it. In, in fact, you don't need insulin to store dietary fat. Your body will store whatever fat you eat immediately if it's not burned in your fat cells. Or in some cases, if you're lucky, your triglyceride stores in your muscle tissue and things. But that means it's gone through some processing first. But generally, it just stores it straight away. It doesn't need insulin to do so. And when dietary fat goes up, so does an enzyme go up that's called HPL, and that HPL will actually stop your body from body, burning body fat. You'll stop burning fat, just like insulin will, and then it'll allow you to burn that dietary fat for fuel, and then it will store whatever you don't burn. Now, the issue with the insulin is that anytime insulin is spiked, that's true, your body is now storing blood sugar, glucose, all the carbs and protein and things that you ate in the protein that's turning into glucose, and it's storing these things in tissues and putting them in there so they can use it as fuel so if your muscle tissue is now getting a big surge of glucose coming in and that's even what happens with protein when you eat protein your body produces insulin in fact in many cases insulin calorie for calorie goes up higher from protein than it does from carbs it's just that then if you don't have the immediate blood glucose what your body does is then it releases glucose from your liver to accommodate the insulin <laughs> that the protein uh, produces so that you still just have carbs circulating in the bloodstream to store and burn for fuel. So when it's burning that for fuel, that's preferred fuel source, your body stops burning fat. When it stops burning fat for fuel at all and stops releasing fat from your fat cells, the fat that is circulating in your bloodstream from your diet, because there's always fat in the bloodstream from the diet, it takes you days to digest and absorb all the fat that you eat. So you always have some in your bloodstream, even if you're eating small amounts. It will go ahead and store that as, as body fat directly because it doesn't need to burn it. So that's what happens. Well, the problem is that this is just the way that the body disposes of calories. The insulin is not the enemy. The insulin is there just to facilitate storage and use of the calories and food that you eat. The calories are still the issue. And here's what I mean with that. Your body, when you eat food, particularly all your carbs and protein, insulin goes up. Your body is burning glucose for fuel. Fat storage is going up. Any fat that you ate is now being stored as body fat. Then once blood sugar normalizes, you've absorbed uh, the bulk of the carbs and the protein and whatever else. It's elevating insulin. Blood sugar is stabilizing. Goes down. Your body goes back and starts burning body fat. And in fact, 
This stage up and down happens all day long every time you eat. And it happens whether you are overeating or undereating, meaning when you are bulking or cutting, you still lose and gain body fat every single day. You will have periods of time every day to where you gain body fat, your body fat gets stores get bigger, and you'll have periods of time the same day where they get smaller, irrespective of whether you're bulking or cutting. What determines whether you gained or lost fat for the day, the net turnover is were the spikes in the amount that you stored bigger or smaller than the phases where you lost over that net period of time. Because you're always doing both every day. We're, we're metabolic creatures and it's an up and down cycle every time you eat. If you stored more than you burn, then you gain body fat for the day. It's very, very simple, but it goes up and down. And so this, this worry about, oh, well, this, this amount of insulin release here caused me to gain fat. So what? That would happen even if you were eating only 1,000 calories a day. If you ate just 1,000 calories a day in a single meal, and that's all you ate, and you burned 3,000 calories that day, you would still gain body fat from that 1,000 calories you ate during a, the, a period of time, no matter the composition of it, whether it was high fat, high protein, high carb, whatever it happened to be, you would still store body fat as a result somewhere in there. The only exception might be if it was a 100% protein, you ate zero dietary fat, but you should expect to die if you keep that up for long. So the truth is, the, the insulin there is people aren't understanding it, and they don't seem to understand that you store body fat, and you lose body fat every single day, no matter what diet you run. It's, you're just looking at the net difference between the two over the 24-hour period, or even a one-week period of time. And again, that comes down to basic energy balance. The basic energy balance is really the good or the bad guy there as far as gaining and losing body fat. And insulin is just one of the tools involved to regulate the transport of what you're eating. And remember, without the insulin isn't the bad guy there because without it, you would die. You would never gain muscle. You would have all sorts of problems. I mean, the insulin is, is critical. It's the way that your body transports most of its fuel around the body other than dietary fat. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.